everybody, my name is Marina, I'm a certified information systems auditor, but I also like teaching programming. And in this tutorial we're gonna do a simple React application, but we're gonna learn how to post the information from the database in MongoDB Atlas to the React interface, and the other way around, how to get the information from the React interface through a simple form to Express Server and to the MongoDB. So, subscribe to my channel and let's go! Okay, so in this tutorial we're gonna build a simple React application with backend based on Express Node uh, and connected to the MongoDB Atlas database. Uh, it will have a simple bootstrap navigation bar with three links. Home, that will be just static with some sample text. We'll have notes that will render the notes that we create in this page. So this is a one-page React application, but it feels like we have three separate pages. Um, thanks to React Router DOM package. Okay, so let's start. So first of all, let's go to our terminal. And we're going to see into desktop where I would like to create a new directory. Let's call it notes app. Okay, cd into it. And here we will create our React application through the command npx create React app. Oops, app. We will call it front end to be clear. Okay, so our React application is uh, created. Let's cd into our front end folder and here we're going to install some packages that we're going to need in our react front end namely we will install the bootstrap then we will install the react router dom and we will install axios okay now let's start our npm and look and see how our react application looks like now it will use the default 3000 port and it's working. Now let's work on our interface. So let's go to our Visual Studio Code, open up this folder, Notes app. Okay. Let's go to the source file. And first of all, I would like to remove everything that we don't need. So I will leave just two files, index.js and app.js. Everything else I will just delete. In our index.js, once again, I will remove everything unnecessary and we will just render the app, the app component, which is right here. Here, I will also remove the logo and um, let's just delete everything, just simpler to work from scratch, at least for me. And here, we'll return for the meantime just a div. Uh, that will say h1 uh, react here and see if it works. Oops, what's up? Okay, react here. It's working. So let's plan our application. What we want to render here is we want to return a navigation bar a home page, a notes page, and create a notes page. So our navigation bar will always be shown across all these three pages, while these three pages will be rerouted using the React Router DOM package. Let's work on our navigation bar. Let's create a new folder in the source called components and let's create our first component that will be called navigationbar.jsx. Okay, and here we import react from react, it's pretty standard. We'll call our function navbar and it will return something and then we'll export it as default navbar here. As we install the bootstrap, let's just get it over with and uh, import bootstrap in React. We already installed. Let's just copy this line here and paste it in our index.js file. So here we will import 
this bootstrap and now we can use it in our navigation bar so we want to return and nav with a class name and let's copy something from bootstrap mainly in nav bar bg dark and uh, let's make it a container uh, we need to render it here so instead of uh, just commenting it we will render it right here okay expect an assignment or function call da, 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 because we need to return it yeah navbar is not defined <laughs> of course we need to import navbar from components navbar and now it's working but is empty for now let's create some links here for example just uh, for now let's just call them h4 we will have three links home notes and create notes okay here we will import a method from react router dom that we will call uh, that is called link and we will be able instead of just statically writing home here we will be able to render this component here home that will be directed to the route root here we'll do the same link um, notes and it will be directed to let's say slash notes and here we do the same render link and the path will be to slash i think create uh, create note okay let's see how it looks we should not use a link outside a router that is correct we need first to configure our routes here so let's import browser router as router and route okay and now we can return instead of returning just the nav bar we're gonna return the router and inside this router we're then gonna render all our components okay so we're already rendering the nav bar and as we said it will be shown across all three pages so it will be outside the route but for the three other links we're gonna use the route <coughs> And we will wrap it around our links. Route. We do this in order to specify that uh, to specify the route that will take us to each of these components. So in this case, the path will be. Uh, the same as we specified here the links so this path will be the root route this path will be the slash nodes and this path will be slash uh, create create reset no yes reset create now let's see it's working now it's taking us to home to slash nodes and to slash create Okay, so now let's create each of these components, home, notes, and create notes. We go to components, create new file. First one is home. The second one is notes, JSX. And the third one is create note.jsx. And in each of these components, let's just specify the template. Import React from React function will be create note will return some div where we will have the h1 that will say create note page and then export as default as a create note component now let's copy everything to our home page 
we will return this, the same basically but just rename it it will be home page and export it as home save in our navbar we already returning something in our notes let's return notes notes page and export as notes now we can import all of these created components in our app.js so we import first the home page from slash components slash home we can import the notes page from slash components slash notes and we can import the create notes component from slash components slash create notes okay and now we can render it here so at this root route we said we are rendering home here we are rendering notes and here we are rendering create notes okay looks good so home page notes and create notes but we don't want home page to be rendered on every page so uh, we specify here that home is an exact component okay so we have home notes and create note looks good just let's make everything aligned so in every component the we specify the diff class name as container okay i will copy this in every component here we'll have container save and here we will have a container save okay so home notes create oops we didn't save this one Okay, so let's just change the styling of the navbar a bit because this blue is and underlined is killing me. Let's go to our navbar. Okay, let's create a new file. We call it navbar.css. And here we will create class for every link that will be just link and copy it to here and to here. Let's import the styles here navbar.css and in css file we're going to specify some styles for the link that mainly the color will be white last thing i want to do here is to specify that on hover we don't want any text decoration please okay uh, and on hover i would like also color to be pink I like pink home notes create notes okay looks good now let's work on functionality let's just render here some sample text lorem ipsum I copy this one right here go to our home component and paste it as a paragraph okay in our notes, uh, we will then uh, extract data from the Mongo database. Now let's work on our create note page. Here we want to have a simple form with the input for the title of the note, with text area for the content of the note, and with a button submit. Let's do that. Let's go to our create note, and here we will re let's make it a bootstrap form. So. Let's go find a bootstrap form and let's see what we have to do here. Uh, we have to wrap every input into a div with a form group class and every input has a class of form control. Okay, that looks simple enough. Let's render here form and inside our form we will have an input, a text area and a button so we said that input should be wrapped in a div so let's do that and also text area will be wrapped in a div okay 
div with class name of form group. Let's copy it also for the text area. And input should be with the class of form control. Okay, class name equal form control. Copy this for the text area. Save and let's have a look. Okay, it looks better. Let's just specify the button here, add note. Okay, and let's give it some styling from Bootstrap. Let's make it BTN, BTN large, and BTN, let's say, info. Okay, now it looks better. I will just specify for the input a name that will be title. And for the text area, name will be content. Let's turn autocomplete off for both inputs. Because it's annoying. Okay. And let's add a placeholder. What the, what the hell? Not title. And this, the placeholder, will be node content. Okay, so now what we want to do is to track the changes in this field and in this field. And when we click the add node, we want to uh, send these inputs to our back end. But first, let's work on this functionality in the front end. So on each input, we need to call a method on change that will change activate the function handle change and we do the same for the text area and for the button we call the method on click that will activate the function uh, handle click okay so in this component we can now create a function that will help us to handle change that will take an event and do something with this event, for example, log event.target for now. Um, then to handle change, we need to track the state of the input. So for this, we import another method from React that is called useState, and we use it here. So we create a new constant. Uh, what we need to, to keep track of inputs. And the function set input will help us to do that. And this will be equal to use state. That will be an object because we have two fields to track. So the first field is title. That will be initially empty. And the second field is content. That will be also initially empty. And so in this function handle change, we can now destructure this event.target so we can and make another constant with name here and let's say value let's add value also here that will be equal to um, input dot title and here value will be equal to input dot content that will come eventually from here from this object so let's dis uh, destructure this event.target. And now we can use this function set input to, um, to set this title and content to our actual input. So we have access here to our previous input, just not to erase it. And then we can return an object where we have all the previous inputs and we have also a new value for for the and based on the name so if we change the title we set the title to this value if we change the content with we set the content to this value okay now we need also to create this function here handle click let's do that it, it will also take an event because we need to prevent the default state of this event 
which will allow us not to refresh the page after we click the button. And then let's just console log this input here to see if uh, we receive our data correctly. Let's go to our front end, open up our console, uh, create a note one, a content one, click on the button and we receive the title and the content. Now we are ready to connect our front end with the back end. For this, let's go back to our terminal, open a new tab, and here we will cd out of the front end folder, and in the root folder we will create our server.js file. And we will also create a couple of folders that we will call routes and models. Mm -hmm. Now we have to initial, initiate the npm here, npm init, with the default settings. So I just click enter for, for everything. Now we have our package.json file here. And for this tutorial, we will need the following npm packages. So we write npm install express, then we will need mongoose, and we will need um, <laughs> course. And let's run our server. Okay, so now we are ready to configure our server. Here we will require express. We will create our app. We will require also course. And mongoose. And now we are ready to use our course, use the express.json method to parse the request coming from the front end. And here we'll rate later connect to Mongoose. But, and we will later also require the route. But for now, let's just specify that app is listening on port 3001, which should be different from the React default port, which is 3000. And we will log in the terminal that the express server is running on port 3001. Now let's specify this route as a proxy key in our front end, as a connection point. So in our front end folder, we go to the package.json file and we specify a new key proxy equal to http colon slash slash localhost 3001. So this is our home route, our route root route. <laughs> okay, let's go back to our JS. Now we are ready to connect to Mongoose, but before doing so, let's go to our MongoDB Atlas. If you are not familiar with how to configure the clusters in MongoDB Atlas, I have another tutorial on that one, link in the description below. For now, I assume that you already have an account in MongoDB Atlas and a cluster. So I will log in with Google. This is my cluster. We click on collections and you can see the current databases that I have. So for this new notes application, let's create a new database. We call it notes db and one collection will be notes create. Now, node database is empty for the moment, but now we can connect it to our application. Let's go back to clusters. Now let's click connect, connect with the Mongo shell, copy this link and go to our terminal. We open here a new window for our MongoDB. Paste this link here and specify the name of our database, which is nodes db. Enter password. This is the password from my username uh, admin marina account, which we created 
here in the in the database access all right so it's connected i assume let's just run some commands to check yes we have our node database okay so now we are ready to connect our application let's copy this link here and go to our server.js file so here we will specify mongoose.connect and paste the url but here instead of db name and any everything else we will just specify the name of our database node db and here instead of password we will specify the password from our database admin account okay everything looks good now let's that we have our database and our collection we are ready to create our first data model let's go to, to models folder and create a new file that we will call node model.js here we will require mongoose and we will create a new schema that we will call node schema that will be an object where the title will be a string and the content will be also a string okay and now we can create also our model that will be mongoose.model and it will be referred as to node and it will use nodes schema so now let's just export this module as a node and now after we exported this model, we are ready to use this node model in our route. So let's go to our routes folder and create new file that we will call node route.js. Here we, we will need to require express. So constant express for require express. Constant router will be using the express router method. And here we will uh, we will also require a node that we just created uh, outside this folder in the folder models called node model okay later here we will configure the route to get or send data from the database to the front end but for now let's just export this module as a router okay uh, and now we are ready to use this route that we created in our server.js file. So here we will specify app.use at the home route. We will require the route that we just created. So routes, not a route. Okay, so now we are ready to send data from our create node page to our route and uh, eventually to our server and to the MongoDB. How do we do this? We need another package here, which is called Axios, that we installed previously. So import Axios from Axios. And instead of console login here, when we click on the button, we will use Axios.post method. And we will specify two arguments. The first where do we want to post this information that we just inputted and tracked this will be the address of our backend server which is http colon slash slash local host 3001 and let's do it slash um, create so we will send this data to this route and the data that we will send will be a new node. So we need to create this new node. And it will be an object where we will have a title and content. So in this case, title we get from our input. So we specify input.title. And content is input.content. Okay, and we send this object to this address so now let's go to our route and specify that router dot route 
at this address we will use a post method that will receive a function of request and response to make it a narrow function and it will help us to recreate this node that we just um, that we just create created in the front end so we can parse the request into title that will be request.body.title and into content that will be request.body.content and we'll create a new node here in the back end that will be new node mo new node model not new model but a new document in the notes model with the title and content field and then we will just take this new note and call the mongoose method save okay now we are ready to save and test let's go to our front end refresh create note one it's a beautiful day by you two beautiful call <laughs> add note okay we didn't send any response but i assume it works and we can just check our collections in our mongodb atlas let's go to notes notes and you see it's working so okay it's good to have some response here but it's not essential now what we want to do is when we create the notes we want to retrieve all the notes to be shown on this page so we need another route so we have we we should create another route that will take us to slash notes and that will, will be also a post request uh, no it will be a get request and it will also be a function of request and response and it will just take our note model and call the find method on it then it will take this response uh, this found notes let's say and it will send response in JSON format with this found notes so we send here from the back end from our note model and we receive them here in the notes so here in the notes we will also we have also to fetch this data that we just received from the note route and how do we do that we need a method that is called use effect from react uh, honestly we also need to to import use state here because we need to track the state of the notes okay so let's start let's fetch some data okay so let's start with create a new constant that we will call notes and function set notes that will be using state method and uh, here we will track the state of this node which will be eventually an array of objects and each object will have a title that will initially be empty and the content that will initially be empty now let's use effect use the use effect method to fetch the data so here we will have an anonymous error function that will help us to fetch the data from which route from slash nodes yeah yes from slash nodes okay and after we fetch this data we want to receive the response and we want to check so if our response is okay we want to return response in json format and after that we want to take this json response and we want to set our nodes to be equal to this json response okay and here instead of returning okay we can return also h1 but we will also return the information from our notes okay so 
Now, uh, because nodes is an array, we can call the node.map method, and for every node, we can return um, h1 with node title, for example, and we can also uh, return a paragraph with node.content, and that's it. Let's test it. Parse an error. JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Okay. So here we cannot actually render it separately because these are children children tags. We need to return some sort of div and enclose these two inside this div. Okay. Save. Refresh. Let's go to our home, to our nodes, and to our create nodes. Why we are not receiving any data? Because we need to restart our React server. Let's stop it and start again. I think when we add the new proxy, the new key, we need to restart the NPM. Okay, now it's working. It's rendering data from our database. So our app, even if it's so ugly, it can <laughs> create nodes, let's say. <laughs> Day 55 of 100 days of code. I'm so excited for this tutorial. We can add notes and we can see this note added here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and then I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.